Surely. Okay. All right. Um, Proverbs 25, 25, like cold water to a weary soul is good news from a distant land. Bula, everybody. Bula, bula. Kiara. It's uh, really good to see everybody. It's really, really good. Even though it's cold, it's raining. Ah. It's great <laughs> to see everybody. You know, yeah. sometimes, like at this time, people are still pulling their blankets, still trying to get warm. But I'm so thankful and so very grateful to have everybody here. It's a blessing to wake up to another day and be able to worship. Eh? So I mm. welcome you all in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Before we sing, uh, let's just bow our heads and open in prayer. Mm. Mm. Father in heaven, King of kings, Lord of lords, creator and sustainer of all that is. Father, we come before you with, with the hearts of thanksgiving, with hearts full of praise, Father, with hearts that is so open and ready to receive your message today. Thank you, Father, for the blessing you have given us, for the love that we are able to share. Thank you that we are able to worship together today. Father, we just uh, commit this service into your hands. May the words of the speaker be the seed that is planted and, raised, and it grows fruitfully in our lives. Please bless those that are joined here this morning and those that will join later. Father, we just ask and we commit each and every person's lives today. Please keep us warm as we worship together, Father. Bless this day, Father, and bless each and every one of us. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I like to keep us warm. Amen. <laughs> the first song today. The sun. <laughs>
Hola. Hola. Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon to all those who are here for Zoom, um, wherever you guys may be, uh, either here in Fiji or abroad. Um, we'd just like to thank you all for making the time to attend this morning's online service. I sure hope you are all doing well, wherever you may be, and that you've had a wonderful, blessed, and not so tiring week. I would like to firstly acknowledge our Lord and Savior for giving us the ability to be here, uh, but to also survive our long past week. For today's, serve, uh, today's announcements, I don't really have much today. However, I would like to just thank you all for giving us the ability to um, come together to share a word with our um, good Lord, but also just wanted to thank you all for the, excuse me, <clears throat> for your prayers, um, for those who know for Seth and his mother, uh, Selai, they are traveling back to Lao uh, on the boat, um, by boat on Tuesday. Thank you all for your prayers for their time um, away from home. And I would also like to announce uh, Timothy Brown, a very uh, well-known and very close family member, uh, family and church member of ours, who have who has now uh, added to his family a beautiful uh, living daughter. We thank you. Uh, all for your prayers, and we also like to thank you, um, the Browns, uh, Browns family for uh, letting us be able to announce this and to also share the uh, amazing uh, addition to the family. We, we bless you all, and we pray that um, everything goes well with not only the new addition, but also to the rest of the family, wherever you guys may be. Um, as you've heard uh, prior to today's service, it is quite um, chilly here in Fiji, uh, probably in, in no comparison to those uh, in the States, uh, New Zealand or Australia. However, we do appreciate your prayers as it is quite unusual for some of us uh, Islander folks uh, to be wearing so many layers in our little uh, island out here. Um, Lastly, uh, for my announcements, um, we have 25 days left for our festival, our celebration, apologies, our celebration, which will be held in Pacific Harbor. It's on the 31st of August to the 6th of September, and that is equivalent to just a little over three weeks. I hope all of you have um, prepared for it, that you're able to get yourself sorted and I do look forward to seeing you all there. For our, the rest of today's service, we have we have a video from Speaking of Life, number 5037, with the title Prevailing with God by Claire, uh, Cara Garrity, followed by a testimony by one of our beloved youth members, members, Tahila Nabungona. We will then also have a special music sung by the Nako Tonga family with the title, Draw Me Nero. We will then have a scripture reading by Wani Wanimbuli, or sorry, Jacob Wanimbuli, a, well, a very well fine young man who is um, currently in Australia. Uh, we pray that you, um, not only, <clears throat> sorry, um, we pray for your safety, wherever you may be. Um, he would be reading the scripture, Genesis 32 to 22, uh, sorry, chapter 32, verses 22 to 31. And we also have Tokasa, a youth member out in Nandi, who will be reading Romans 9, verse 1 to 5. Lastly, we will then have our sermon by Ipeli Nakotonga, Love at First Thought. Prior to um, our service uh, commencing, I will now just uh, have a little intercessory prayer. <laughs> uh, if we can all just bow our heads. Father, we pray that we might all serve you faithfully. 
we pray for all our church leaders that might be faithful ministers of your word. We pray for the leaders of the nation, of the world, that they might be catalysts for justice and peace. Have mercy on those who suffer from grief or trouble and bring your peace and blessing to them. We now bring to, your, to, to you our own needs and the needs of others, especially Timothy Brown and his new addition to the family, as well as Seth and his mother, Selai, traveling back to Lao uh, later on in the week. Pray, Father, for also those who uh, were unable to uh, come to attend today's service, wherever they may be. We pray, Father, for their health and their lives and their commitment to you, Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you. If you ever spent any time in a park, you've probably observed a parent with a toddler who wants to race. The three-year-old doesn't care that her legs are about a third of the length of her parents' legs. She simply wants the joy of running and connecting with her parent. You may have watched the parent let the toddler get a head start and then take smaller steps to give the little one a chance. The parent may have even let the toddler win despite being superior in size and coordination. When I see something like this, it makes me think of how God approaches us with humility, compassion, and kindness, wanting us to boldly wrestle and engage with him. There's no better story to illustrate this than Jacob wrestling with God, as told in Genesis 32. The chapter begins with Jacob receiving news that his brother Esau is coming to meet him with 400 men. Jacob is worried because he schemed to get Esau's firstborn birthright, and he was sure Esau was coming to take revenge. Jacob divided his camp to make it look smaller, and he sent his wives and children ahead of him along with gifts for Esau. That night, alone and in his solitude, Jacob wrestles with an unidentified man until daybreak. Let's see what happens next. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him on the hip socket, and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then the man said, let me go for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So the man said to him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. And the man said, you shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with God and with humans and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, please tell me your name. But the man said, why is it that you asked my name? And there he blessed Jacob. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, for I have seen God face to face, yet my life is preserved. The sun rose upon him as he passed Penuel, limping because of his hip. Up to this point in his life, Jacob had relied on scheming and manipulation to get what he wanted. These methods weren't without consequence though. He was estranged from his family and fearful of his brother's wrath. Jacob's wrestling match with the man whom Jacob identified as God in verse 30 resulted in his transformation because Jacob refused to let go of God and God was willing to let Jacob prevail to help him change. The evidence of this radical transformation is both physical and emotional. Jacob's damaged hip caused him to limp. And though we don't know how long his hip injury persisted, we do know that the Israelites would not eat that hip muscle of a sacrificial animal out of respect for Jacob's wound from God. We also see that Jacob's name was changed to Israel, which means one who prevails with God and humans. We can learn from this story that some of our transformations come through perseverance and wrestling with God. More importantly, God wants us to engage this way, boldly asking for blessing, 
unafraid, not because we deserve it, but because we know God wants to give it. Jacob's face-to-face -face confrontation with God shows us the intimacy God desires from us. God comes to us in humility, letting us prevail like a toddler racing a parent. May we boldly wrestle with God when the mysteries of life confront us, like great beauty and great sorrow. May we offer the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit the intimacy they desire by allowing ourselves to be sculpted, renamed, and transformed by the love that won't let us go. I'm Kara Garrity, Speaking of Life. Hi, thanks for watching this episode of Speaking of Life. We hope you enjoyed it. We'd love to connect with you. Here are a couple of ways you can subscribe to our newsletter, GCI Update, and like us on Facebook. And if you'd like more resources from GCI, check out our website. Thanks again for watching. See you next week. Bula and hi to everyone. For those who do not know me, my name is Tahila. I'm Laws and Baku's daughter, Mrs. and Mrs. Nawana. I honestly did not know what I should share on my testimony, but I finally did. I actually searched up how to do a testimony on last minute. I focused on it a lot. Something that I'm struggling with, being very busy and occupied with schoolwork and other things. But in the midst of this, we always need to have time for God. I just want to testify how God has been so good to me in my life. Um, with a few Bible verses I'm going to share on and scenarios and how they relate on my life. So reading from the Bible, Proverbs 19.21 says, Many are the plans in a person's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. I actually wrote one time what I would have achieved when I turned 19 to 21, thinking it would turn out the way I wanted, but it didn't. I was very upset and disappointed, but then again, God had to remind me of this Bible verse that only His timing was perfect. And another reading from the Bible is John 14:14. 14, 14. If you shall seek anything in my name, I will do it. I was at first very marveled with this Bible verse. It turned out to be my favorite Bible verse because I thought whatever I prayed for, I could get. But God actually showed me that anything we ask for in prayer must be according to the character of God and only in the will of God if it, if it is granted. And the last Bible verse, 1 Samuel 15 2, to obey is better than sacrifice. I actually got this Bible verse from one of my favorite hymns titled Trust and Obey. I finished my high school studies in Assemblies of God High School. I never made a lot of friends in Form 6, but on my final year, I made very close friends, but it turned out that my friends were struggling with some things I didn't know of. So they involved themselves with ungodly things that I wasn't involved in, but was a part of. <clears throat> so I had very big hopes on my FSFE marks, and it turned out bad. Once again, God had to remind me, despite whatever the sacrifices I need, staying up late, studying, praying for high marks, if I am disobeying or rebellion against God's words, how, how is he going to bless me? And I actually prayed about my friends' lives, asking God to help them with the struggles they have. So, God is very merciful and a great teacher in life. When you are astray, you will always bring us back to the correct path.
Brethren, I'm the reading of our verse today, and it will be taken from Genesis chapter 32, verses 22 to 31. And it reads, During the night Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two female slaves, and his, and his eleven sons, and crossed the fort of Jacob. He took them and sent them across the stream, along with all his possessions. Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until they appeared. When the man saw that he could not defeat him, he struck Jacob's hip socket as he wrestled and dislocated his hip. Then he said to Jacob, Let me go, for it is daybreak. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. What is your name? the man asked. <laughs> Jacob replied, Jacob, he replied, Sorry. Your name will no longer be Jacob, he said. It will be Israel, because you have struggled with God and with men and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, Please tell me your name. But he answered, Why do you ask my name? And he blessed him there. Jacob then named the place Peniel, for I have seen God face to face, he said, and I have been delivered. The sun shone on him as he passed by Peniel, limping because of his hip. Thank you. Our Bible reading for today is taken from the book of Romans, Romans chapter 9, verses 1 to 5, and it reads, I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience bears me witness in the Holy Spirit that I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my brothers, my kinsmen according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from their race, according to the flesh, is the Christ, who is God over all, blessed forever. Amen. May the Lord bless his word. again to to everyone connected online um, we have representation from Tonga Samoa Nauru USA Fiji um, Australia and of course our members from New Zealand uh, it's a, it's a wet day here in Suva uh, this morning but we're thankful to to God that we are able to connect um, through technology and to, to share the good news of Jesus. Um, before I begin, we, we also wanted to share a prayer request uh, we received from New Zealand. We're uh, sorry to report that um, Mr. Dennis Richard's brother, Raymond, passed away uh, on Thursday of complications from his uh, diabetes following surgery. Um, your prayers for Raymond's wife, Lily, and his children, Haley and Robert, um, appreciated. Um, I also wanted to thank our youths who are participating today. Thank you for your commitment and hearing our call, um, especially to those who, who are outside of Suva and Fiji. Um, though we don't get to see you often, we thank you for agreeing to be part of today's service. Um, my underlying theme for for today's sermon is love and transformation through relationship um, and it's loosely based on the two bible readings uh, the first from genesis and the second from from romans thank you to jacob and uh, tokasa for reading them out uh, for us today um, so the bible reading is a, a story you might be familiar with already and that is from Genesis 32, where Jacob wrestles with God. Um, a bit of backstory on Jacob before we jump in. He was a twin and he was the brother of Esau and his father was Isaac. And before Jacob was born, we get an idea of who he is. 
Um, an earlier text tells us that Jacob and Esau were unusually active in the womb, that they struggled within their mother, Rebecca. And when they were born, Esau was delivered first with Jacob grabbing at his heel, which is in part the reason that, that he got the name he has, because the name Jacob means uh, supplanter, um, or in more casual context, heel grabber. Uh, to, to supplant something means to supersede or replace something. But we understand in this context to replace through means of deceit. <clears throat> Um, Jacob was already looking for things that would validate him as a man. And so early on, we're given this picture that Jacob struggled with inferiority. Esau was quite manly. He was, um, he was a hunter and he was hairy and he was big. And, and Jacob was, was more of a, of a mama's boy. Um, it would seem that even the boy's father, Isaac, preferred Esau over Jacob. And, and there's nothing more wounding to a man than to not receive love and affirmation from their father. So throughout his life, Jacob seemed to always try to get that affirmation from, from Isaac, even if he had to be shady about it. Um, and so in Hebrew culture, there was this tradition called primogeniture, which basically meant that the firstborn son received the largest blessing from their father. Uh, sometimes it meant that you know, they get everything from their father, all the land, all the livestock. Uh, they were basically the ones on whom the father would depend to uh, to carry on the family name or business or, or whatever. Uh, and so Jacob wasn't really okay with this. Uh, he desperately wanted his father's blessing. Uh, and so when J Isaac uh, was old, uh, it was at this point he was getting old and, and blind, Jacob pretended to be Esau. Uh, and he went into his father's room and asked him to pronounce the blessing on Jacob. Uh, this was more ceremonial than anything. It, it didn't necessarily mean Jacob would get all the land and all the livestock, but he desperately needed to, to hear those words from Isaac. Uh, so Isaac, confused, old and blind, he did, he, he blessed Jacob. Um, and as you can imagine, when Esau found out uh, he was furious um, he threatened to kill jacob so jacob's only option at that point was to flee um, he started a life for himself away from his family and here's where things get interesting up until this time what did jacob want more than anything he it was to be blessed by his father um, it was the blessing and affirmation from Isaac. But once he got it, he realized how unsatisfying it was, probably. Um, and this is what I think we can be a lot like uh, Jacob. We at times believe that, you know, if we can't get our hands on, on this one thing, life would be uh, what it meant to be. It, it might be a relationship or a career or family or, you know, some, some measure of financial success. It could be a lot of different things. But if we get, if we just get our hands on that, life would be what it was meant to be. And then when we actually may get it, then we realize how disappointed we are and how unsatisfied we may be. Um, also C.S. Lewis, said that when you find that nothing in this world will satisfy you, perhaps it means that you were made for another world. So how did Jacob respond to all of this? Well, not, uh, not great. He continued to chase things that 
he thought would make him happy. Uh, Jacob, Jacob was a hustler. Uh, he was always looking for ways to acquire the next thing that he thought would bless and validate him as a man. Um, if you want to hear from God, it takes getting alone. You've got to get rid of all the noise and distraction. And then one night, Jacob was by himself. Um, in fact, the text says literally he was alone uh, in Genesis 32. Um, how many of you know that at times you want to hear from God? That's what it will take. It will take getting alone. Uh, you have to, you got to slow down. Got to get rid of all the noise and distraction. Be in solitude. And, and when Jacob was alone, the text says uh, that a man came to him and he wrestled with Jacob until daybreak. And Jacob would not let the man go until he blessed him. <clears throat> and finally, the man touched Jacob's hip effectively dislocating it. Now, this man was either God or represented God. Either way, it doesn't really change the meaning of what we have here in the text. Uh, Jacob's relentless persistence to find blessing in his life caused him to strive against God. His resistance made him completely blind to the fact that God himself was Jacob's blessing. And when the man saw that Jacob was just not getting it, he touched his hip and wrenched it out of place. Now in human, human physiology, the hip socket and the muscles around the hip socket is one of the strongest in the human body. Um, it's probably why, uh, why it's there in place to protect the femur, one of the strongest bones in the human body. Uh, which is a very hard injury to recover from. And yet the slightest touch from God was all it took to weaken that joint in Jacob. Um, a good analogy would be a child trying to play wrestling. Um, kids, when they were young, uh, would, when they are young, would often want to play wrestling with their older siblings or, uh, you know, with their dad. And in, and in their mind, there's this idea of like, if I can conquer dad or my older sibling, I'm going to be strong. Um, the child is giving it everything they've got and the father is just being careful not to hurt them, right? Um, at times the child is, um, the child's father is just playing along, uh, like the child is winning and allowing themselves to be pinned down knowing at any time they could subdue the child if they wanted to. Um, yet out of love, the child builds up their self, but the father builds up the child's self-esteem to play along, allowing themselves to be dominated at times. So the child begins to believe in their own strength as, as a person. Um, it's it's playtime, playtime with a purpose. Um, so the psychology of it, uh, what must be happening here is, is really important because the child is affirmed by the person they need affirmation from the most, their father or their older sibling. Um, and what Jacob's been missing all of his life was the blessing of affirmation from his father. That's what uh, he's been missing. And in, in his goodness, God gave that to Jacob in the still of this night. And then he told Jacob, um, your name shall no longer be Jacob or supplanter, but instead it shall be Israel, which means contends with God or prevailing with God. Consider what that must have meant to, to Jacob for the, for the boy who had always felt powerless and, and inadequate always trying to prove and validate himself. This, this was everything. Um, now he was the man who had contended with God and survived. 
In fact, when Jacob said to the men, I will not let you go until you bless me, the men responded by saying, What is your name? It's a strange response in the heat of a struggle, but the man didn't ask for his own benefit. The question was meant to benefit Jacob. It's essentially what he was trying to say was, Jacob is the man you have been. It's not the man I've made you to be. And it's time you started to live into the identity that I've given you. At first glance, in God's kindness, he gave Jacob the affirmation and blessing that he had been chasing everywhere else. Um, I sometimes get confused with this passage wrestling with God in the middle of the night, God allowing um, his, himself to be overcome by Jacob. Uh, but as we look closer, we can see the beauty within the story. God gave to Jacob exactly what he needed. Uh, he gave him the affirmation and blessing he had been chasing everywhere else. Uh, then he gave him a physical reminder to his hip to remind uh, to re to help him remember where his blessing came from um, and that was the God himself um, Jacob's life was marked by numerous challenges just as ours often are like him we may find ourselves grappling with uncertainties uh, regrets and even our short own shortcomings uh, it's during these moments that the wrestling with God begins, the struggle that many of us experience in our faith journey. We question, we doubt, and sometimes we even resist God's plan for our lives. But it is in this very wrestle that we can discover the depths of God's love. When Jacob found himself wrestling with the divine, it was a sign of God's relentless pursuit of a relationship with him. God did not turn away from Jacob's struggle, nor did he abandon him because of his imperfections. Instead, God engaged Jacob in a wrestling match, showing that he desires intimacy with us, even in our most vulnerable moments. In our wrestle with God, we come to realize that his love is not conditional. And he wants us to draw near to him with our whole hearts. During the wrestling match, God touched Jacob's hip, leaving him with a limp. This moment of brokenness is a profound lesson for us. Often it is in our moments of weakness that we are most open to receiving God's love and grace. Through our brokenness, God molds us into vessels of his love and transforms us into instruments of his peace. Uh, it's when we admit our need for God that we can fully experience his love mercy and healing touch. As dawn broke, Jacob refused to let go of God until he received a blessing. In response, God bestowed upon him a new name, Israel, symbolizing a new identity and purpose. This moment teaches us that when we wrestle with God, Seeking his blessing, it's not about getting what we want, but rather aligning our desires with his divine plan. Surrendering to God's will brings blessings beyond our imagination. And it is in this surrender that we discover the depths of his love. Despite Jacob's past of deception and mistakes, God's love was not limited by his flaws. In the midst of the wrestle, 
God saw Jacob's heart and forgave him, welcoming him into a renewed covenant. This act of forgiveness exemplifies the vastness of God's love. No matter how far we may have strayed, God's love extends to embrace us, forgives us, and offer us a new beginning. Now, here's something else that I find really amazing and beautiful about Jacob's story. Where else do we see God being vulnerable in order to bless men? On the cross. At no point was Jesus ever overcome in what we see in the Gospels. He willingly laid his life down to rescue us from a debt we could never repay. Genesis 32 is, is kind of like the first picture that we have that somehow shows how God would redeem us. Uh, that though he was or he is the almighty king of creation, he allowed himself to be overcome for our sake, that we might be free and would live with him forever. That we would know Jesus himself is our blessing. Um, in the two scripture readings we had this morning, we learned that an encounter with divine love will change or transform us in ways we can't anticipate. Love is an extraordinary force capable of changing hearts, healing wounds, and igniting the spirit within us. As we delve into the depths of his divine love, we are reminded to open our hearts and minds to experience the profound transformation it brings. Um, at the heart of God's transformative love, is its unconditional nature. Unlike human love, we, which often falters or wavers, God's love remains steadfast, unchanging and all encompassing. It reaches out to us regardless of our flaws, failures or past mistakes. And this love seeks to embrace us in our brokenness inviting us to experience renewal and transformation. We see that in how Jacob in his brokenness was transformed when he wrestled with God. <clears throat> Scripture also reminds us in 1 John 4, 16. So when we have come to know and to believe the love that God has for us, God is love, and anyone who abides in love abides in God, and God abides in them. God's love is the wellspring of hope and redemption that can purify our hearts and transform our lives. God's transformative love carries immense healing power. It reaches into the deepest wounds of our souls soothing our pain and granting us the strength to forgive others and ourselves. When we experience God's love, we find the courage to let go of bitterness and resentment, uh, fostering an atmosphere of reconciliation and unity. In Isaiah 53, 5, we're reminded of God's love manifested through the suffering of Christ. <clears throat> but he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed <clears throat> for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. <clears throat> and by his wounds, we are healed. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let us recognize that <clears throat> it is through embracing God's love that we find true healing and restoration for our brokenness. <clears throat> if you just give me a minute. 
Sorry about that. God's <clears throat> love is not passive. It is an active force <clears throat> that transforms us from the inside out. When we accept this love into our hearts, we begin to see ourselves and others through God's compassionate eyes. We become vessels of his love, radiating kindness, generosity and understanding to the world around us. <clears throat> Romans 12, 2 exhorts us, do not confirm, conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. It is good pleasing and perfect will through god's love we are liberated from worldly desires and destructive patterns enabling us to embrace the abundant life that god has designed for us <clears throat> our uh, second bible reading from the book of romans touched on the <clears throat> transforming power of kenotic love Kenosis or kenotic love is love that is self-emptying or self-giving love. Jesus emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, assuming human likeness. We read that in the book of Philippians. This self-emptying love is a sign of great transformation and proof of the divine at work in and through human beings. We first witness Jesus reducing his divinity to fit into human flesh and then willingly letting himself be executed to take human feelings and actions spurred by hate and isolation that is sin into himself to put them to death, free us from them, and include us in relationship with the triune God. Jesus shows that there is no evil in human beings, that, that there is no evil in human beings that is too big to be encompassed or overcome by his self-sacrificing divine love. Humanly speaking, we cannot generate this kind of self-emptying love on our own, but we can trust that developing our relationship with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit will put us in a position to grow in our awareness of the divine, canonic love at work in us and others. Um, in conclusion, as we reflect on Jacob's wrestling with God, we are reminded that God's love is intricately intertwined with our faith journey. Embrace the wrestle, uh, for, it, for it is in the midst of our struggles that we can encounter the depth and breadth of God's love. Let us never forget that he seeks a personal relationship with each of us desires to bless us <clears throat> and embrace us uh, with forgiveness and grace may we have the courage to hold on to god even in the midst of life's challenges and experience that transformative power of his boundless love transforming love can be difficult to define and it is impossible to generate on our own, though we know it when we see it. Let us carry with us the knowledge of God's transformative power. Let us remember that we are not defined by our past mistakes or limitations, 
but rather by the profound love of Jesus. May we continually seek to be vessels of his transformative love, allowing it to work through us to touch and change the lives of those around us. May Jesus' love heal our wounds, transform our hearts, and empower us to be instruments of his love in this world. Let us live each day secure in the knowledge that we are cherished and loved unconditionally by the Almighty. And let us in turn extend this love to others, making this world a better place for all. Today's underlying theme is, like I mentioned, is love and transformation through relationship. <clears throat> First John chapter four, verse 19, we love because he first loved us. Brethren, before you and I were born, we were already in his mind. Or simply put, it was love at first thought. Inaka. Speak the name of Jesus Over every heart and every mind Cause I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus I just want to speak the name of Jesus Till every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus
Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, great loving Lord, we thank you so much for bringing us to the end of another service, Lord. We thank you for the opportunity and the ability to be able to fellowship online virtually with members across the world, Lord. We thank you that we have that platform and that we're able to um, connect with one another. We thank you for the message that has been brought to us today. We thank you for um, speaking through your people through your children lord and we ask that you'd um help open our minds to what we heard today and that we instill it into our daily life and our daily routine that we'd always reflect you everywhere we go and um always love other people no matter what and just as you love us we thank you for um this day that all the activities that are to come as we disperse virtually um we ask that you protect us on our way and guide us in everything that we do um in our daily lives in the upcoming week that you'd lead us um into your will and into your plan lord for each and every one of us we thank you lord jesus and we ask all these things in jesus name i pray amen and for our benediction today, um, I'll be taking it from Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 13, which reads, You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Amen.